All right. Uh, welcome to uh, to everybody in the chat. I um, apologize for the late start here. Uh, this is the the first YouTube live stream that we've ever done at PM Square. So um, I've been doing a little uh, kind of last minute um, stuff that needs to be taken care of uh, in order to uh, go live. So um, again, I apologize for the technical delay there. Um, and welcome to our What's New in 11.1.4 live stream. To kind of set the stage for what we're going to do today and, and why it is that we decided to stream on YouTube rather than you know, set up a go-to webinar and do something that way is that uh, really there's two things. One, we wanted to share kind of our live reactions to the new version with you. So um, while IBM was gracious enough to give me a preview version of this release, I have not spent an extensive amount of time uh, messing around with it. You know, I, I don't have highly formatted content to pre present to you. I have not put together a um, a slide deck or anything like that. There's not going to be a message from any of our sales guys, right? The point of this is to try to foster growth in the Cognos community to get people talking um, to us and with one another. Uh, and with that in mind, what I'd really like you to do is to interact with me via the chat. So um, for those of you who are used to just kind of seeing go to meeting presentations uh, where typically the um, Two voice streams a few seconds apart. Well, that's uh, unfortunate. Does everybody else hear that as well? Or is it just uh, MIG? Can someone confirm that they also hear two voice streams in the chat? I haven't heard that from anyone internally at PM Square. OK. Okay, so Mig, uh, on your end, maybe um, something's going on with your audio. Um, it seems like everybody else is okay. So, um, uh, so we really, um, our, our hope is that you'll interact via the chat. I can see uh, what you are typing live, right? Whereas in a normal go-to meeting or go-to webinar, a lot of times the presenter has no idea what you're talking and you know you save questions for the end, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so, the plan here uh, is is send me your questions, your live reactions. We'll talk through it. If there's something you want to see, um, we'll show it, right? If you want to talk about, uh, I mean, really anything. I'm here to answer your questions about this release of Cognos and Cognos in general. Um, and uh, it's good to see people chiming in now. Uh, so thank you, everybody who's, who's here to participate. Um, uh, I guess to... Um, I see Nick saying that this version is slow. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a, uh, I'll, I will talk about that a little bit um, as we go through, but that's a good point, Nick. Um, so uh, just to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Ryan Dolly. I'm a senior solution architect and product manager with PM Square. I typically, uh, you know, if you've attended PM Square webinars in the, in the past, I'm the voice coming over your, um, uh, your phone or your speakers, right? Um, now you can you can see me, uh, which is is another reason why we wanted to do this, to try to get to know, uh, so you can get to know us a little better and, and we can get to know you um, a little better. So um, as we, we go through this again, any questions you have or reactions to what you're sh seeing, just um, let me know, right? Um, I do have in my browser window here, 11.1.3 uh, and 11.1.4 available, so you can um, you can see the difference. And right off the bat, I'll start by saying um, there's a little difference in kind of the welcome UI, right? So um, when you come in here, there's a couple things you'll notice, right? The first thing is now there's this welcome section um, that has links to the how-to catalog and the IBM samples, right? Um, this can be turned on and off here. So I turn it off. You can see our typical, uh, mostly our typical Cognos welcome screen. It looks a little different graphically, but um, it's basically the same. Now, a couple other things to highlight here. The first thing would be the recent section. You can now switch to a list view um, to kind of give you a little more information on the screen at once and to help you understand, for example, what it is you're looking at, data modules, reports, explorations, Excel files. Um, etc. So that's a nice change. The second thing you'll notice, and, and I'll leave these up as we go through so you can see how they 
um, how kind of interactive it is is now there's this alerts section so uh, you can see you know what's new to read what's new in getting started click more info with this link if I click this link it takes me to a page um, that shows you kind of helps you understand what you're looking at and I can page through these alerts so each user when they log in and there's a new alert uh, will get these and can dismiss them kind of individually right and importantly you now have control over this as admins so when you want to send a message to all Cognos users via the the manage UI you can send in a message um, that uh, that will appear here for all users when they first log in um, at the top of the screen, right? Um, so a couple comments here. Nick says, uh, love the new UI, it looks nice and fresh. I agree, like they, it's kind of subtle changes they've made to this page, but I think they all add up to make a big difference. And then uh, Ben O'Brien asks, can the branding be changed on the welcome screen? So um, yes, right? If you want to change this logo or remove um, change it from saying IBM Cognos Analytics to something else. Um, you can do that, right? Uh, you also have control on the login screen of a co well. I guess the question there is the login screen. So if you're talking about the login login screen, I'm not sure. If you're talking about this home screen, yeah, you can change the branding on the home screen, right? Um, the login screen, I'm not positive. I'm sure my colleague Sonia Fournier will will pipe in here uh, in the chat and and let us know um, as she always does. Um, so here's the welcome screen, right? Small changes, but I think good ones. I especially like the alerts. Um, this alert here, this is needlessly complicated. Why isn't it? There's just a text box that says alerts is from Sonia, right? So that's not something that IBM put in it out of the box. Sonia was configuring it earlier today. Um, and the actual configuration for that, if you're curious and you go into, uh, I believe it's in config system advanced settings so it's like a key value setting um, that you uh, that you you put the messages in there right um, so that's where it's not like the the world's greatest uh, user interface for putting these alerts in it's really an admin feature which is why it's kind of admin-y right um, but um, there's some params you put in here and then uh, when you click apply it will blast the alerts out to everybody are the alerts in real time so they they will not automatically um, show up like like you know uh, it makes a chiming sound and the alert just pops up on the screen. Um, users do have to um, uh, refresh basically the browser. So if someone's, it's not, and I see where you're going with that, Cognos boss. It would be awesome if if it could like like make a sound and then the alert pops up so you could like alert everybody who's in the UI that say you need to take it down for maintenance or there's an error or something like that. Um, it's not quite there yet. What I would suggest is you go to uh, IBM's feature request page and and put uh, that in right as like hey I would this feature is cool but to take it to the next level you need to be able to do this right. Um, that would be awesome. So jumping into what exactly is uh, the new um, content within this release, right? Um, there's a lot. I honestly think this is probably the best new release that we're getting this year. Um, so there's a lot to look at as far as particularly uh, what's available in dashboards, I would say, and some changes to explore are going to be um, probably more impactful than, uh, than anything else as far as... Um, you know what we're going to want to show here so um, let's just jump right in uh, there's no new and, and when I say you know it's it's kind of the coolest um, release uh, there's you know there's no new um, you know there's no new like it's not like there's a new studio or anything like that but there's a lot of really nice enhancements to what's available um, so I, you know, I did have some polls queued up that I was going to use, but if, since I'm a huge noob at this, right? There's a, I have a config issue on my end that's not going to allow me to trigger the polls. So um, tune in next time, and hopefully we'll have some interactive polls. But I am curious if you could just type in chat whether or not um, you have users using dashboards in production. I'm, I'm curious to get kind of a, a reading on on the people who are attending today to see um, whether or not that's happening. Hopefully. 
if you're not, some of what I'll show you today um, will lead you in that direction. So the first thing to show, and let me just go ahead and pull trusty our trusty old um, Go Sales or Great Outdoors uh, data here to start to take a look at um, what they have in this version. So the first thing I'm going to want we're going to want to take a look at um, is let me just grab something like uh, year and revenue and drag that in so it's going to do its you know cognos ai thing right and i'll expand this so that we can see it a little better um, if you're having a problem with the resolution on my screen uh, go ahead and and let me know I, I have of course i'm demoing off of my home desktop which doubles as like a gaming uh desktop so i have a high resolution monitor sometimes when i'm doing this people have a hard time reading the text so um, let me know um, if uh, if I need to make adjustments to that, but so you'll see, right? This is nothing new here, right? Now, um, let me show you where this starts to get cool. I'm going to go ahead and embed, say, a month um, underneath year, right? And so now we can see we've got a kind of crazy looking line chart, um, and uh, it's there's a couple of things that we're going to want to do to it. Now, the first one. Um, that I want to show here is that there's now in Cognos the ability to do forecasting. So this is something that people have been asking about forever, right? Um, when is Cognos going to be able to do forecasting? Well, the answer is in this release it can. So when I click the forecast button, um, I have the option to turn forecasting on. I'll toggle it on. Um, and you're going to notice a couple things, right? And before I get in any of the options for forecasting, um, I want to point out something that blew my mind, and I just discovered it um, today when I was monkeying around in here. Let me hover over this warning to show you. If you notice, the shape of our line changed when we applied the forecast, right? Now, why would that be? The reason for that is because, it, as we all know, Cognos does not out of the box properly order things like months, right? It'll order the months in alphabetical order um, rather than in the correct chronological order. Now, when I click the forecast button, as you can see in the pop-up here, it says forecasting requires visualization data to be in chronological order. Therefore, your visualization data was automatically reordered. So not only did Cognos apply a forecast to my line chart here, but it also automatically reordered the x-axis of my visualization to be in chronological order rather than alphabetical order, which uh, when... When I saw it doing that, I mean, honestly, I clicked that button the first time and I was like, oh, it's broken, right? Like it reordered my line chart. Um, forecasting is busted. Um, but actually, it, Cognos is now smart enough to recognize that it needs to reorder those elements, um, which like it was just kind of galaxy brain moment for me um, when I first saw it do that. Um, so that that was really cool. Now, um, you do have some parameters you can monkey with in here, right? How many forecast periods do you want it to do? Auto, what it does automatically is it will do 20% of your total. So if you have, you know, 100 um, points, it'll add 20. Now, you can change that if you want. Um, you can tell it to ignore periods. So um, if you have, like... Uh, you know, you have a line chart. It's kind of a classic line chart you might see in Cognos where, you know, it's going along and then the last period, because you're only a third of the way through the period, like uh, goes way down, right? The slope of the line chart. Um, you can tell it to ignore that last period for forecasting purposes. You can give it a confidence level and also um, tell it whether or not to include seasonality. So this is an area where um, where Cognos, I think, is, um, is kind of uh, way ahead um, of competitors like Power BI insofar as um, it automatically does seasonal adjustments to its projections. So it can recognize based on the time element on the x-axis if there's a, a seasonal cycle to your data and take that seasonal cycle into effect when it does these projections. That also blew my mind. Um, so that's uh, one thing in here I wanted to show you guys that was um, really cool. Um, and I'm curious, is this something, I know a lot, like this is a feature, I demo Cognos a lot in kind of a pre-sales capacity for people who are considering um, purchasing uh, this feature. So I am curious, I want to know if this is a feature that, um, that you guys think would get used within your uh, organization. Um, 
you know, I, I know it demos great, right? It demos awesome. Um, but is it something that people will actually use is another question. So that's, um, that's something I, I want to try to understand. Now, another awesome thing about this forecasting feature, um, let me just pop uh, our visualization uh, open here, go into focus mode. Um, pro tip, this is called focus mode uh, when you do this. I'm, I'm slowly learning what IBM actually calls these things. Um, so let me just drop, say, retailer type into color. Um, you'll notice um, it will now apply the forecast automatically to our retailer types. So this is another thing that um, in Power BI today, for example, it can forecast, but I don't believe it can forecast um, uh, multiple categories, right? Um, whereas here, Cognos will forecast um, in multiple categories going forward. So that was also something that was pretty exciting. Um, this is, uh, again, something like I, I absolutely love. Now, another thing to notice in here, look at where the key is located in this visualization. Um, a Anderson uh, Pinto asks, is this feature available on reports too? Uh, no, it is not available in reporting at this time. Now, I would anticipate that it's going to come to reporting, um, but it's not in there today. So uh, it's another one of those things where I would go to IBM's feature request site um, and uh, and put that request in. Um, that's a great question uh, for you guys. Um, and I, obviously it needs to be in there. Now, one thing that is available in reporting is if you look, the key, if you think about how this operates in 11.1.3, the key automatically is on the right-hand side and takes up like a third of the viz, right? Now look here, the key is now at the top of the screen. I can resize the key automatically. Let's say I, you know, I had a bunch of elements in here and, and I wanted to resize it um, you know, to, to get more real estate dedicated to the actual um, data itself. That, uh, you can do that. And that is now how the visualizations in reporting function as well. The key is automatically at the top of the screen in this type of for format. Um, now that's something that you can um, you do have control over how that's displayed, right? So you want to move it back over to the bottom or to the right or left. It's it's not like this is where it has to go, but by default, this is where it goes. Um, and I think it's a huge improvement. And you can also see, for example, when I hover over now, it gives me this pop-up telling me um, some of that information. If I hover over one of these points, it gives me a pop-up giving me the um, revenue sum forecast and the upper and lower confidence bound uh, for that data point. Um, and if I click on one of these, um, you can see, now I'm, this is one thing, I'm not sure why I have to click on something down here to get it to do this. So this is something maybe when you guys go to this version in your environment, maybe you'll figure it out and let me know why when I click down here, suddenly it actually changed the way the visualization is displayed to show me kind of a an actual confidence range on the Viz itself. But um, that's one thing. Um, that it does once I, I click on a particular point on the viz, right? Um, then suddenly it switches to this display. So not positive why it's doing that, but um, it is nice that it has that display option. Of course, we still have our insights from the previous version um, of from 11.1.3. So I can turn on insights um, and now it'll plot an average on here as well. Um, so now we're starting to get into kind of you know, this is getting pretty powerful as far as what you can do in dashboards for um, showing things like averages. You know, when you when you turn that on, it doesn't just do averages. It will also do like different um, slopes or R squared. It will tell you uh, when it does that, um, why it's choosing those things. Most of the time it'll plot an average because it feels that most of the time an average is what makes the most sense. So this gets at one of the things that's about with dashboards and Cognos that's different from other BI tools is dashboards is really tailored at um, your end users. And so rather than giving them the option of a ton of different slopes um, for them to choose from, you know, when you go up here to insights and you say, hey, um, you know, turn on insights, it'll automatically pick the type of line that it thinks fits best. It doesn't give you that control. In my mind, that's good and that's bad, right? It's good because you, you know, as an end, like, I mean, even I honestly don't know what a lot of that stuff means, right? I'm a BI and DW guy. Um, uh, so, um, you know, uh, taking that capability away from even me in a way is kind of smart because I, I can come in here and start plotting lines on here until it shows me what I want. Conversely, uh, until, until it shows, tells the story I would like the data to tell rather than the story the data actually tells, right?
Conversely, um, the uh, um, you know if you really know all about that stuff, then obviously you want the ability to do that. Like um, uh, mybra88 um, asks, uh, you know, well, what methodology does it use? So um, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, if you go to IBM's website, um, you will, they have a section um, that, that explains what it's doing to forecast. Um, so uh, I would go ahead and encourage you to take a look at that and that will, um, we'll get more into more into it. Um, Jerry asks, uh, when is the new version released? So it's it's released today. Yeah, Ryan and, and Nick ha, have got you there. So it's out now. You want to go and download it, go and download it. You can see um, if you go to, let me just um, drag this guy on here, right? So you can see here on IBM's website, um, the release notes. Um, so all the release notes are in here. There's really a lot for this version. It's already to, uh, 229 Eastern. Um, and, and I've really only shown a little bit. So I will say for this live stream that I can go late. Um, I can go past one um, uh, in order to um, to accommodate, show you guys everything. As long as people are, are here and are interested, um, I will keep rolling, right? Um, Mike Bortowski, I'm not sure I can wait 900 years for this. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Mike? Uh, um, another thing I'd point out here, notice the alerts changed. To read what's new in dashboards, click more info, right? So when I went into dashboards for the first time, right, it gave me an alert at the top of the screen saying to see what's new, um, click more info. And if I click more info, you'll see it'll actually take me to the support page to show me what's new in this version. Forecasting, visualization legends, waterfall, right? Context-based dashboard generation. So um, there's a lot of cool new stuff in this version to show you guys. I don't want to belabor the point on dashboards because I know... There's a lot of stuff to cover in here, so um, I have another six hours. <laughs> me too. Uh, uh, me too, Cocknose Boss. Um, so uh, uh, another thing to show you that I just like, small change, but I love to death, and that is um, the crosstab object has changed. Um, so as we all know, the crosstab, ob crosstab object in all 11 versions up to 11.1.3 to charitably, to, to, to charitably put it, that object sucks, right? Um, and so um, I, I've been telling IBM this for a long time. Uh, so it's not like they didn't know, right? Um, but uh, this new crosstab object is just dramatically better. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to drop retailer type into rows. I'm going to plunk revenue into... Um, values. You can see it's going to automatically build a crosstab. And it, as you can see, um, it's not a huge, like already, if you look at it, it's not a huge giant, like I used to call it play school BI, right? Because the crosstab object was so gigantic um, and, and uh, you know, just, just did not look the way you expected. Um, so you can see, right, I've got some values here that are kind of hashed out. I can just drag and resize to, to get that, right? I can drag and resize here if I want to get a little more padding on um, on this particular item, right? Um, so pretty interactive. Now, uh, let me go ahead and um, plunk year down at the top, right? Um, whoop, let me undo that. It's still a little futzy. What I want to do with year, see, I, I this looks enough like power play that my, I go back to power play brain and I start trying to do power play things. Um, and it doesn't quite work that way. Um, but if I drop year in columns, you'll see, right? I've got my years and my departments on the side. Um, I can go ahead and um, resize uh, these types of things. Um, uh, Intel Analytics asks, would you say the focus on feature enhancements in dashboards versus reports or data modules? Um, no, uh, I would say that, that that's not the focus. I mean, definitely dashboards are getting um, more love. Uh, um, but, um, data modules are still getting a lot of, um, attention, you know, reporting, I don't want to say reporting is being left behind. I think, um, I don't think it is. I think that reporting is in a place where a lot of the, like, a lot of the things that, um, there's not a lot of new flashy stuff to do to reporting in, to, in my mind, right? A lot of the improvements that need to be made to, uh, reporting are things that are really developer focused. Um, like if you were to talk to Cognos Paul, right? Um, 
our all all of our um uh, our, our 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 mutual friend I, I i i assume everybody in the cognos universe knows paul or at least has been to paul's blog at this point um you know paul has a list of like 17 really specific developer focused things that he wants improved I do think they're slowly getting around to those. Um, so I wouldn't say that reporting is like not a focus anymore, but definitely heavier focus on um, uh, dashboards and, and data modules. I, I couldn't tell you development timeline, but um, um, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. I think that they're, that is at least in design. Okay, um, I'm assuming you guys can hear me again. Uh, my, I believe my headset just died there. So um, all in, uh, all in a day's uh, work um, here in the uh, the PM Square office. So um, uh, where was I going with that? Um, good conversation in the chat, by the way. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, I picked it up. Um, so uh, luckily it made a, a little beep in my ear to let me know that things were going south. So um, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, nest things in here, right? Um, so if I were to grab, say, like, this is where it starts to get a little power play-esque, right? A little bit. I don't, I don't want to make big promises, right? But so first of all, um, let me just expand this so you can see. I can see all of this. And if I wanted to, um, uh, like, grab, say, everything that says store, right? Right. OK. And then I'm going to right click on it and choose custom groups. And I'm going to say um, this is uh, stores. Create. OK. Now, this is a little bit like custom subsets in PowerPlay. Right. It's not as good as custom subsets. And, um, you know, there's still some wonky formatting stuff you can see in here. And part of this has to do with the fact that um, I'm actually looking at this on, uh, you know, I'm using a remote desktop top that's a different resolution and my resolution on my monitor, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if I were just doing this in my Chrome browser, I wouldn't have to like make these minute adjustments as much, but I remote it in um, for today's session. So um, so you can see like that was a little bit like a custom subset, right? Um, now the next thing is like I can nest in here. So like let's grab a country, right? And I'll nest this in. Um, and you notice I'm not like, I don't have to interact with stuff up here to do this. I did all of that nesting um, directly by interacting with the cross tab rather than interacting with some kind of definition, right? And I could further nest from here. Like now I want to put in, you know, um, retailer sites, right? I can nest the retailer sites um, into this. So so this is, in my mind, a huge step in the right direction uh, for, for this feature. They've redone lists to have a lot of this type of functionality and formatting as well, right? So I cannot tell you how happy I am um, to do this. You're going to have to bear with me one second because I'm just going to adjust this cable because you notice I kind of like, right? So just hold on one sec. This is amateur hour here. Um, this is why I see live streaming on YouTube. It's like, hey, it's wacky and fun, right, guys? Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Uh, hopefully you all can hear me. Uh, I'm just going to sidle up over here. Let me check my uh, EQ, make sure my mic is still good. Okay, yep, it is. Okay, so one funny thing about this live streaming is it's all like tools for gamers, you know? It's very weird. Um, okay, uh, I'm back. Um, so uh, lots of great feedback on here. Deeply nested items like in PowerPlay. Yeah, so I mean, so my feedback to IBM was like, just, just make this do exactly what PowerPlay did, please. If you can just make it exactly PowerPlay, you, you don't have to rebuild, re, re, you know, re, redesign the wheel, right? Just give me PowerPlay. Um, so um, 
I missed a ton of uh, questions in there. Um, lots of great conversation. I like it. Um, so report authoring improvements. There are a few report authoring improvements. We can jump to that. Um, an option to freeze column headers. Good question. Um, I believe I saw see if well look they're frozen so there you go and let me like you know just to um, let's go into sales here and grab uh, like nest quarter so again I can like drag and drop quarter to nest it um, I love this I love it so much you can hide these summaries now there's a lot of a lot of power play stuff that you you know you can't do here right um, it's not power play but uh it's about as close as we've gotten i really think for those of you who have power play or analysis studio users i'm not going to say that this is like and they won't let those things go i'm not going to say oh yeah now they can um but we're heading in that direction so start getting them used to that idea for sure um okay um there's a couple other things you know the ai assistant um has, is getting really good. I know a lot of people think this is a parlor trick, right? Um, but it is really getting there, right? So, you know, you can start to, to, to type things like, um, like um, show um, average uh, income by uh, education, right? Um, so you can see here, right? Uh, well, it didn't quite pull up what I wanted. Yeah, see, it didn't find what I wanted. Um, Let's do show data, okay? And then I'll grab the one, that one. And now at this point, I would expect it to, um, oh, it's weekly earnings, right? That's why it grabbed the wrong thing. Uh, it was user error. Okay, so um, show average weekly earnings by uh, education level. Okay, so what do I wanna point out here? Average, this measure is a sum, right? Uh, it's an uploaded Excel file. Cognos identified it as a sum. In the AI assistant, I told Cognos to average it, right? Um, so you're starting to be able to um, to kind of get to, you know, to that level of uh, functionality here, right? So if we wanted to say like, um, uh, okay, show uh, average weekly earnings um, by uh, education level. where let me think um or let's try this everything earnings where education level i haven't tried this one before so this is when i said i'm trying stuff on the fly like i mean it where education level is bachelor's degree i'm not sure i'm gonna guess this isn't gonna work yeah it didn't work um but you can it's because I don't know the data that well, right? It's like I need to actually um, punch in um, the right stuff, right? Uh, so it's not it's not like a catch-all at this point, uh, but it's getting there, right? Or like show top five education level by average weekly earnings. So here you can see the top five education level by average weekly earnings. So I told in that case, I told it top five. I told it to average. Um, it can do min and max. It can do total. It can do counts, right? Um, how many uh, education level? How many education levels are in my data set? The answer is 11, okay? Um, the other cool thing, check this out. Create dashboard from the charts, okay? Boom. <laughs> Built a whole dashboard based on that one chart. Um, so... Is this exactly like the dashboard I would build? Probably not, right? But um, it really gets you there um, in a hurry. Uh, as far as the link to the release notes, um, I do see your uh, request there. So um, let me pop that open over here. I think this is going to get it for you. Um, no, that's not going to do it. Where I have it. Here, this I'm I'm not sure if this is going to take you directly. Um, can you tell it to order? That's a great question. Um, let's try. Uh, show average weekly earnings by education level. Order by um, what is in this data set that I could order by? Uh, I don't know. Let's just see if it takes that command at all. Yeah, it doesn't take that command. That's a good one though. One thing you can do, so like these are in a funky order. 
Um, one thing you'll notice is like if, if you click on this and you go to um, sort, there's a custom sort now. So I can, right, I can tell it right within the visualization UI that the way this should go is 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, uh, high school, um, some college, associate, bachelor, professional, master, doctoral. apply reordered on the fly so that's another little thing one of my criticisms honestly for ibm when it comes to dashboards is that too much of stuff is hidden in context menus people can't even tell what what features are available here um, and even developers so if you're if you're a cognos developer which I, I would venture to guess that a lot of you watching this right now are um Cognos boss says sales staff thinks this is magic. It is kind of magic. It's really cool. I would really encourage you to start playing around with this and see what it can do. Um, but um, uh, there's really a lot of power in here. Even if you're a Cognos developer and you're like report studio, report authoring, right? I still think of it as report studio. Um, uh, um, you know, um, I, I would I would continue to you to I would I would encourage you. To start playing around with this and see what's in here because there's really a lot um so uh great questions great conversations so far um what should we take a look at next i'm going to guess everybody's going to say show me what's new in reporting but i'll take a quick poll type in the chat um, what it is that you want to see next um, and we'll jump to that and like i said i can go past the hour for those of you uh, who want to continue to um, hang out um, happy to i mean I'll, I'll i'll keep going uh forever ibm has been to hogwarts yeah <laughs> it really like this is really getting pretty good um i will you know when 11.1 first came out which was about a year ago actually it was announced at data and ai forum last october um, when this first came out this this chat was neat but it really couldn't do that much and now it it really can i would encourage you to um uh, to look at the, um, oh, Nick says custom viz, duh, custom viz. Um, everybody is saying reporting. I will show custom viz and then we'll jump to report authoring, okay? Um, here we go, custom viz. Uh, a vote new with notebook. So yeah, actually there's a good mix of stuff. There is new stuff in data modules, um, a little bit new with notebooks, uh, a little bit new in reporting. So we'll take a look at all that. Question with pins, that's actually a great question. Um, I'll, I'll try to address that too. Don't um, don't let me get off the the line here without um, talking about pins. But um, oh, excuse me. Um, custom viz. So if you look in my visualizations, um, you can see now there's this custom section, right? And I've got a custom a couple custom visualizations up here. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll add the custom viz in. So you you might be asking yourself, what is it that I'm looking at here, right? The custom viz is a D3 visualization, a custom D3 visualization that um, has been added to my Cognos instance, right? Uh, now I can deploy it in visualizations, um, in, in dashboards rather. I'm pretty sure you can deploy it in reporting too. I'll check the release notes. I haven't tried it there, but I think you can. Um, uh, and you can see here's this quadrant viz. It looks like a Cognos viz, but it's a, it's this is going to be part of the samples um, that are available for this release. So this isn't something I built, um, but this is actually a D3 viz, and I can now come in here and I can put on here. Um, you know, let's take a look. Like x uh, x axis uh, is going to be revenue, and y axis will be um, quantity sold, right? And for names, I want to drop on there um, product number. Okay. So um, here you can see, here's when I was telling you guys about that, like, um, you know, the new functionality. Like, here's an example of why would I want a slider up here? Whoop. This is a D3 viz, right? Um, and uh, not only is it a D3 viz, but let me add something else on here with like, um, you know, what would be a, a good uh, additional chart? Oh, let me, here, here's a cool one. Okay, here we go. 
There's a new KPI visualization. I'm telling you guys, this is getting really cool. You, you guys got to start using dashboards. Okay, the new KPI viz. Let's punch into the KPI viz revenue as our base value and planned revenue as our um, target value. And, oh, I want a spark line. Okay, cool. Let's drop um, year into that. Uh, well, that doesn't quite have the detail that I want, so um, let's actually plunk drop. Let's nest quarter into it to give us a little bit better, like a slightly better looking um, visualization there, right? Now, again, I'm doing this live, so I'm not going to guarantee this is going to work well. But th what this should do is when I click on this guy, it did update. Yeah, you can see. Check it out. This is updating. So not only do I have a D3 visualization, custom D3 visualization embedded in Cognos, but it's actually out of the box integrating um, with the my uh, my native Cognos visualizations. Um, so uh, I hope I hope that like that that was just like blew me away when I saw that. I, I hope that you guys are as into it as I am. Um, I love this new this this new visualization as well, and the fact that. Again, custom D3 viz interacting with an out-of-the-box Cognos viz. It's like, yes! I, I seriously did a fist pump um, uh, when I first saw this. Um, so um, uh, Ben O'Brien asks, can uh, dashboards and visualizations like KPIs do right back? They cannot do right back. So sidebar conversation. Um, and I, I, you know, I got to watch what I say here because of NDA and stuff like that. Um, well, I'll, 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 I'll preface that by saying I have no idea if IBM ever plans on doing right back, right? But I do know that they are thinking about their fish, their um, ecosystem of visualization tools, and in particular, the um, planning analytics workspace and Cognos Analytics dashboards, and opportunities to sort of bring those together, right? From just like, a, you know, can they? come more in line and if they were to come more in line then the question becomes well then maybe can we do right back out of cognos i don't know right but i know ibm is thinking about this um, whether or not those two products should come closer together and if so then maybe i would expect right back would become a capability it's not one right now i would venture to guess that like if we were to like get a couple beers with cognos paul and try to do a hack where we could because you know you can enter you can um embed into this um, web pages and I you know like I wonder if could we embed something from workspace into this UI where it looks like it's Cognos Analytics dashboards but really you're looking at a cross tab from workspace and if you do and if you interact with it from there it does right back I don't know I haven't tried it I'm not gonna say it's possible sounds possible maybe we could figure it out if anybody's going to data and AI form in October um, I don't know, like I said, maybe we'll get a couple beers and try it, right, um, in October, next week, uh, if anybody's going next week, right? Okay, so a couple questions. How are they uploaded? A couple ways, right? So the first way, their instructions, you do have to, like, there are some steps you have to take to make these D3 visualizations usable by Cognos. So it's not like you can just, like, have some, like, you know, a, like a... <laughs> write some JS in Notepad and, and like upload it into Cognos and have it work. There is stuff you have to do. What stuff? I can't really tell you right now, right? But um, what I can tell you is uh, how do I upload these? So there's a couple ways. There's actually a, a plus button right here, right? Where you click plus and like you can add them from, if, if you have them bundled up properly in the format that Cognos expects them, you, you add them that way. The other way is that they can actually be added um, admins can add them um, from somewhere right here custom visuals so under manage themes and ex uh, or customization there's now this custom visuals um, and it's the same thing you click upload and uh, you would add it in there and of course you have properties right these have properties you can control it's like everything else in Cognos um, where you have permissions and you can see which groups and roles or which yeah which groups and roles have access to them so all of um, your stuff there um, exactly like you would expect. So um, that's how those are um, um, uploaded. So you can embed PAW by using the URL widget. Yeah, see, uh, I, I figured that it was doable. Uh, I just had never tried it. So thank you. This is why like 
why are we doing a, a live stream instead of a webinar, right? It's for exactly this reason, so that we can have a conversation in the chat and, and talk to one another, um, not just you guys talking to us and, you know, Greta reading me a couple questions at the end of the chat, right? It's, um, uh, this is way better uh, in, in my mind. Okay, lots of requests to see what's in reporting. So um, I don't want to, um, this, it's not going to be a ton, okay, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that was all D3 um, uh, JS. How can we verify a certain format of D3 is accepted? That's a good question. Um, yeah, the links doc to the Viz samples. So um, the Viz samples, yeah, the links to the Viz samples do not work in the documentation. I have them. So if you want them, um, let me know. And, and I will get them to you. Just email me at uh, rdolly at pmsquare.com uh, um, so that I can email you back a copy of those samples, but I'm happy to, uh, to send them to you. Um, okay, uh, how can we verify if a certain format is accepted? Eh, I'm not sure yet. Um, I, I, I really have not played around that much with this feature. Um, and I will also admit that when it comes to using like writing D3, I am not like I, I do not know how to do that. So we have people at PM Square who do. And now that this release is live, I'm sure they will be letting me know all of this stuff shortly. So I, um, I, uh, I uh, apologize, uh, Sonia Perry, that I can't uh, answer that question, but um, I'll be able to answer it soon. So uh, I'll try to get back to you when I can. So what's new in reporting? OK, so it's not going to be a ton. But let's take a look at it. Um, so we'll open a new report here and let's take a look at, I'll just open a blank report. So um, the first thing that's new in reporting, let me add um, a, our trusty Go Sales. I feel like I know the Go Sales company so well. Um, so the first thing that's new is going to be visualizations. Uh, now more closely match the visualization format in um, dashboards as far as the let me just x axis um, as far as what you like the um, the legend right so um, let's just go ahead and run this guy and you'll see um, run HTML. So you can see here that I now have, um, well, there is no key on here, duh, because I didn't put, let's drop a, just retailer type into the color. Okay, let's try that again, Ryan. Okay, um, so now you can see that I have the same functionality for the key, right? Not all the same functionality, like it's not giving me the actual values right so these are still different between reporting and dashboards but that's one thing that's different um, i know that's not a huge um, thing uh, another thing you can now you can embed custom visualizations in here and you can embed items from a jupyter uh, notebook in here so um, and i'm gonna guess that that's gonna be here yeah notebook this new notebook item um, so you can embed output from jupyter and custom visualizations in here there's a new font. Everything in here is a new font. It used to be uh, Helvetica um, Neue. I don't know. Is that? It must be a German font. Helvetica Neue, um, which is an Ausgezeichnet font. Uh, and I've switched it to uh, IBM Plex. Can you export 11.1 visuals to PDF? Okay, so um, I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm going to say yes. Uh, don't love how that looks, being honest with you, uh, but it's there. Now, another when you talk about can you export 11.1 visuals to PDF, here is something really cool that you can do. OK, um, and I have not. This is this. Well, let me wrap up reporting first and then we'll talk about that. Um, uh, the other so there's a new font um, the other thing that's new in here is you can control access to this 
for your various users, right? So what do I mean by that? Um, let me take a look at your people, right? Accounts. Do, 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 do. So let's just say analytics uh, users. I want them to be able to use that, but I don't want them to have access to the queries. This is for those of you who are like, I still can't replace Query Studio because I can't lock away access to certain things. Um, this is the answer to your prayers, okay? So uh, you come into customization, features, reporting, collections, report, there you go. So if you want to be able to have users come into reporting, but I don't want them to create prompt pages, I don't want them to build, have access to the pages menu or the queries menu or classes or variables, I want to turn report authoring into Query Studio. That's how you do it, right there. Um, so, um, you know, is it an incredible new feature, report developers? No. But I think it's a great addition to report authoring because I have a ton of customers who have Query Studio and they say, well, I can't get rid of Query Studio because I can't let my users go into report authoring for this exact reason. That um, now you, you, you know, you, you can transition uh, away from Query Studio and into report authoring. If you are in that situation, which I, I can think offhand of three or four customers who have like verbatim told me, I can't get rid of Query Studio because I can't turn off access to this menu. Now you can. So there you go. That, those are the changes in report authoring. Um, not a ton of changes in report authoring. So when someone asked earlier, like, is report authoring abandoned? No, it's not abandoned. It's not abandoned. But I don't blame you for wondering that because we have not had a whole lot of um, uh, great new features. Uh, Dino Diambo asks me, uh, can that be set by user? So... Um, Let's see. I'm going to say no. Like, how would that work? If I added a user, I mean, so here's how one way you could do it for sure. If you created a role for that user, individual user, and then you added just that individual user as a member to that role, and then you set the role permissions, uh, that would work. I'm not going to say that's the best way to do it. There might be a more elegant way to do it, but I'm not going to fumble through it live. Um, well, we can mess around with it later. Um, on a multi-page report, is there a way to execute just uh, a single page? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I will test that out um, after the live stream and, and see if there's some way to do it. I don't want to get um, bogged down in, in kind of that level of... Uh, messing around at this point but um that's a great question and maybe we'll save it for the end and, and just like pure like mess around hour so we're at the hour I, I totally understand if um um if you have to leave um like i said uh i can keep going um and and will keep going as long as uh, there are still people um in the chat i cannot let me see yeah i can see okay zach this is all new like learning experience um for me um, where I can see concurrent viewers. So we're at the hour. If you have to drop off, I appreciate you coming to see what's new in this version. There's there's still stuff that um, we haven't uncovered yet to look at um, that I want to share. So I'm going to keep going as long as as lo as long as um, I have a, um, a decent audience um, available. Is master detail feature available with visualization now? That's a great question. I'm going to see um, Sonia. I know if you're still um, watching, could you? Take a look at that while I'm streaming here and see if, if you can get that to work. Uh, Damon Aurora asked, uh, is master, master Detail feature available with visualization? So I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to take your questions and assign them to other PM Square people who I know are watching and have execute um, uh, or and, and I know have access to this server uh, so they can check it out <laughs> for us. So Sonia, if you're able, let me know if you can um, take a look. Cognos Boss, see you next week. Cool. Take care, Cognos Boss. Thanks for coming. Um, so there was a question about, well, can I export stuff to PDF? Um, so let's take a look at, and again, I haven't tried this, but I read it in the, rep the update notes. So let's just um, take a look and see if it works. Okay, here we go. Here we got a story, right? Um, now, 
what they say you can do, and I don't even know where this is in the UI, um, but they say it's in here, right? Is it here? Set as home, no. Uh, filters, what's new in stories? Okay, let's see what's new in stories. Maybe it says in the release notes. Sharing your story. It's got to be in the share menu. Okay, right, that makes sense. There you go, export to PDF. So if you build a story in Cognos, you can now export the story to PDF. It will generate a PDF for you of what you had in, in here. Um, uh, you don't have to go anywhere to continue. So if you're watching the live stream, um, the live stream is just going to keep on rolling, right? So um, I'm not going to be switching over to a different channel and, ev and everything like that. Um, I'm just going to keep going here in the live stream. And uh, and we'll keep going in as long as um, as long as as there are people watching. Um, like any performer, I I will go as long as I have an audience. Um, um, so I've had a bunch of questions in here. Um, in the past, there were packages to download Framework Cube. Is Cognos Tools included? Um, Robert, if you could clarify uh, clarify your question a little bit, um, I'll let you know. Um, I'm not positive what you're asking. Um, yeah, uh, how customizable are, are okay, just technical difficulties over here. So, um, they're not, they're um, they are moving in that direction. I know it's been on the IBM roadmap for a long time to, to bring them together. So I know IBM is, is working in the direction of making it so the new visualizations and the reports for reporting or the new visualizations and the old school charts for reporting have a similar amount of interactivity or, or options. It's definitely headed that way. Um, it's not there yet. And I'm, I'm, there may be undocumented options that you know, or enhancements in that regard that I haven't seen, because a lot of times those things don't make it into the release notes. Um, but uh, um, uh, I know it's heading in that direction. Now, what what's the timetable for that? I, I couldn't tell you, right? Um, the sooner the better, as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Viru asks, are, are there new releases for FM and Transformer? No, there are not. And there is never going to be a new release for FM or Transformer. So let me reiterate that um, and then use that as an opportunity to talk about data modules a little bit and what's new in this version for data modules. So um, this is probably the last time I'm going to make this joke because I know you, those of you who have have seen me present it at um, uh, user groups or watch my webinars in the past that you've probably heard me say this two or three times. So this I'm officially retiring it after this. Um, Framework Manager and Transformer are frozen in Carbonite like Han Solo at the end of Empire, right? They are not going to change. Now, um, that doesn't mean that they're end of life. They're not end of life. They're going to continue to work for the foreseeable future, right? Like we don't have no indication from IBM that they're going to be end of life at any point soon, but they are not going to receive any additional features ever again. I repeat, never again. So you really need to start thinking about um, can data modules meet my needs for enterprise Cognos modeling? And I'm going to argue, and people always look at me like I'm nuts, but I'm going to argue that for probably 80% uh, of, of what it is that you're trying to do, the answer is yes, it can. If you're skeptical of that, message me, uh, email me, you know, I mean, reach out to me, my website, for those of you, you know, my website, Blueview, ibmblueview.com, you can message me there. I'll just, I'll put that on, I'll put that in the chat for those of you who don't know, okay? Um, the, he's the guy who shot first, exactly, Michael. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm happy to, to talk with you about how it is you can do that. It's a little, you know, outside the scope of like going through all of the ways that that's possible. But with that said, um, let's take a look at data modules and I'm going to open one that's already built just for, um, for ease of use here. Um, but let's take a look at what's new uh, in data modules. Uh, and I will reiterate as I go through this that you really, if, if you, um, 
uh, took a look at these at like 11.0.6 and were like, hey, those suck. Well, they did suck. Um, they they unsuck. Uh, so you really need to take another look because they can meet, I would say, like you can do 80% of what you can do in Framework Manager with 20% of the effort in this tool. Um, I would say even more than that, 95% of what you could do in Framework Manager with 20% of the effort. Now, are there things you can't do? Yes, there are, right? Can you build a DMR in here? No. Um, that's actually something IBM is kind of looking at. Can we get a dimensional experience into data modules, right? Um, uh, there's certain levels, so you can do kind of like um, role-based security, but you can't do object security where you say, hey, uh, you know, people with this role can see order methods, but people with this other role cannot, right? You can't do that in here. I know that that's something that they've talked about. Um, I couldn't tell you when it's coming, right? So there are some things you can do in FM that you can't do in here, but a lot of the other stuff, things that in the past you just said, well, I can't do determinants. So... I can't use data data modules. Well, you can do determinants now, right? You can define navigational hierarchies or drill up, drill down paths in here. I mean, just there's there's lots of stuff. So, with that said, um, what is new in um, data modules? So there's a couple nice things. The first one, um, and and I actually applauded. You see that this looks really crazy. Why does this look really crazy? Check this out. Oh, this is gonna blow your mind. Okay, I I moved it somewhere. Okay. Now, check, now I'm going to save it, okay? And then we're going to close out of here. Let's just let's close my data module, and then we're going to reopen it. Drum roll, please. Um, uh, which one was it? The uh, Great Outdoors data module. Okay. Drum roll, please. Look, look. It retained its structure. Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you, IBM. So. Um, for those of you who know, this would open and it always just looked insane every time you opened a data module and clicked on relationships because it would not retain the formatting uh, between data module sessions. Now it does retain the formatting between data module sessions. So you can arrange this in a way that looks sense instead of in a way that looks like the flying spaghetti monster. And um, it will stay that way um, between, um, uh, between sessions in here. Um, can session parameters uh, be filters in data modules like we do using Framework Manager, right? Um, so I th uh, think the answer to that, and, and I'm, I, so I know that Cognos Paul was messing around with this. I cannot remember if he got it to work or not, so I'm going to take a rain check on that one unless one of my colleagues um, knows whether that's possible or not in the... Um, in the uh, chat, like Sonia, I don't know if you've run, tried to use session params in here. I'm not going to try to do it live because I was never particularly great at using them anyways. Um, however, uh, we'll look into that and let you know. Sonia says she can't find a way to do master, master detail with visualizations in reporting. Um, she saved a copy of it in the team content. That does not work. <laughs> so we can take a look at it if you really want. It sounds like the answer is no. If Sonia can't figure it out, I'm going to say it probably can't be figured out. Um, because Sonia can figure out pretty much everything in Cognos. So um, let's take a look at some of our options in here. Okay, first change um, is gonna come into account um, somewheres, one to many. So there's um, uh, new join optimizations uh, in here. Um, there's also, and, and again, I, I haven't actually messed around with this, so I'm curious um, where it is that I can actually set this. Um, the is it in here? There it is. Okay, so you now can do um, join operators, right? Greater than, lesser than, right? Not equal to or equal to n. Equal to n will include null values. Um, so a little more flexibility in terms of how we do joins in here, right? Um, I think that's something that I know a lot of people have been asking for. We've got a couple other um, join optimizations. I would encourage you to take a look at these optimizations if you're not familiar with this. This is one area where I think technically these optimizations may be exist in Framework Manager in the governor's setting for DQM models. Um, but um, that would be the only place they exist uh, if they do exist in FM. Here you can see optimizations. Um, uh, join optimizations used to choke on real data. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that there are certain conditions where join optimizations um, 
really help and other conditions like they don't at all so i mean the only examples that i'm like the examples i'm aware of where i feel like they worked well with with like real data volumes had to do with um situations where you were querying like hey you know we had our we have our oracle database and then we have like a sql server database and we're joining them together in data modules um and you know we we want to use the join optimizations to like render you know, pull a, a data set from, from the Oracle database and then use it in the where clause of the query to the SQL Server database in order to blah, blah, blah. Um, right, I've seen it work well in there. Um, it's not, so, I'm gonna be honest, it's not something I use a whole lot, right? So um, I do think that the join optimization, um, the join optimization documentation on IBM's website is getting a little better to where they're starting to explain to us like ways in which you might actually want to use these. I think they still have a long way to go, but at least it's starting to say, for example, if you look at the um, the updates here, you know, like the range of values. So I'm looking, I'm looking right now at the, um, Oh, and it actually tells you to here too. Well, that's nice, right? So like the filter uses a single between expression using the minimum and max values. So starting to tell you like how these are, are actually working. Um, Rory pipes in, I've used session params in data modules before. Great, thank you, Rory. Um, Nick Waters, what are your thoughts on better data prep and data modules? So I actually, um, I, I use data modules in combination with data sets for data prep all the time. Um, and that's something that... Um, uh, we can take a look at here in a second um, once we we finish up uh, looking at what's new in um, in data modules. So um, so that's a big one. Um, what we just looked at there, uh, just kind of the the non equa joins and um, additional optimization models. Um, a couple other things. So you can tell it to automatically validate right as you work so this it runs on a two second delay once you make a change it'll wait two seconds and then um and then auto validate your model so it will kind of like and it pops up like a little alert to tell you if it failed validation so as you're working um it will tell you like you know you don't have, you, you won't get in a situation where you did a bunch of work and then you click validate and like there's a cascade of problems and as we all know you're not really sure what what caused what right in that cascade of problems um it kind of w will validate as you go you can turn that on like like so and now auto, auto validations on um the properties panel so kind of gonna have a little bit of conformance between different features in data modules or across cognos now there's a properties menu right and as i click around just like what you would see in da uh, dashboards and reporting um, as I click around the different objects here, you can see that uh, the properties functions the same as, as in those other user interfaces. So that's kind of nice. Um, my email, so my email, if you're trying to get a hold of me, my email is rdolly, D, I'll put, just punch it in here, right? Um, that's probably an easier way to do it. Okay, so um, if you're interested in, in reaching me, um, you can reach me at my email there. Um, if, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so um, automatic validation, properties menu. Um, the relative dates, I'm not gonna say I fully understand what they um, what they mean by this. Um, SH, wonderful demo. Hey, thank you, thank you for coming. I'm glad you appreciated this. Um, if you guys like, this format as opposed to a, a more traditional webinar with our slide deck and 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 that sort of thing um you know let us reach out and let us know that that you prefer this type of format i personally am having a lot more fun um so uh, I'm, I'm happy to continue doing it this way uh, going forward instead of uh kind of the the more go to meeting style of doing things um this seems pretty cool to me um so uh and enhanced relative data analysis for multi-tenant users um, I'm not 100% certain what that means, um, uh, but that's something in here. I, I think um, I'll, I'll do a little more digging and, and see what it is, but that's something I, th I think what it means is you can kind of control in multi-tenant environments how it is that um, uh, those relative dates are, are uh, deployed across the tenants. The other thing to show you here is there's new... Um, 
uh, there's new ways to do the um, filters, right? Thank you, Jonathan and Nick and, and Sonia. Awesome. Um, and uh, Jean-Pierre, uh, I, I appreciate the, the positive feedback. Uh, so um, the way, well, how does this work, right? So they've changed it um, how to now, let me see if I can show you. So like when I'm doing um, custom uh, filters or, or groups rather, let's put a, a right uh, and create data group. So for a long time, data groups didn't even work um, in, um, uh, in on measures in data modules. Now they do work on measures and now um, you can um, create different um, styles, right? So you can you can group it like in different different ways, right? So you can say, and this is kind of goofy um, for something like this, but you might want to look at it where you say, hey, everything, you know, that um, I want to create a new group called like, uh, I've never tried this before, so we'll see how it works. Anything that we that sold for exactly a thousand dollars, we want to say like uh, that was a grand, right? And anything else, we want to say not a grand. <laughs> um, create, okay. Uh, I probably should have given this a better name, but you can see now I have this revenue group, and if I preview it. Um, not a grand, and, and then something in here is going to be a thousand, right? Um, you know, we, we might have to search through a gazillion uh, rows to find that, but eventually we would. So um, that's, a, that's actually a really nice change in my mind, too. So we've gone from a couple of releases ago, that custom grouping feature flat out did not work on measures, to um, now it goes to... Uh, now, it, it not only does it work on measures, but you can um, do the grouping in either a text style or a numeric style for measures. And of course, we still have our text style grouping for, um, you know, for text values. Like if I go in here to create a data group, you'll see um, how, right? I don't have the option to group in a numeric style because that doesn't make any sense, right? So now we have two styles of custom grouping in data modules. Um, and, and that's kind of how, uh, how you access the two of them. So I wouldn't say, uh, I mean, not a huge bucket of changes, but I think those are nice. I do think the join changes really do make a big difference, especially, especially, especially if you're in a situation. So let's let's do like some Cognos um, real talk here, right? If you are in a situation, and I know some of you are, where you have a bunch of people in your organization who have started using Power BI because Microsoft charges two sticks of gum and like a uh, kiss on the cheek for Power BI, so it's just everybody has it now, right? Um, and people and Power BI is taking off and you want to understand how do I defend my Cognos turf in my organization from Power BI? The way to do it is to give them these same people, is give people access to data modules and uh, report authoring, or well, maybe report authoring, but for sure data modules in um, and dashboards, right? Because... This is what they're doing. They're doing stuff in Power BI where they're relating two tables together um, and, and they're doing all that stuff on their own. Now, you may not believe that you have users that are that level of sophistication. I know many Cognos shops don't believe they have users that are that level of sophistication. But anybody in your organization who's doing Power BI, that's what they're doing, right? I guarantee you. And where something like these, these join capabilities come in, um, again, is... Um, you know, where this capability now, do I love where they put this in the UI? No, they need to redesign this uh, joint UI. It's okay, but it could be a lot better. Um, you can do this in Power BI. And people are doing this all the time in Power BI. And so the fact that Cognos has it, even if you think, well, I'm never going to use data modules and I do FM and, you know, these types of joins are not what you're supposed to do in a classic data warehouse environment. Like, you're right. If you have a great data warehouse, there's no need to do this type of stuff. But... People are doing this in Power BI today. So if you want to defend your turf, figure out a way, like reach out to me. I am super into data modules. I can help you figure out how to how to roll these out. I promise in a way that will work for your organization, that will help you maintain enterprise security and control over your warehouse model 
to where nobody uh, can do that. Um, <laughs> Mig, too late for us already moving. Yeah, I, I feel your pain. So, um, uh, you know, I can help you understand how to maintain that centralized control, say over, let's pretend this is our warehouse model, where no one can edit this data model, right? No one can edit this data module, but they can build their own data modules that inherit uh, elements from this data module, right? It's really easy to do, actually. Um, and, and so, um, yeah, IntelliLytics, I mean, absolutely right. Like, this is the the this is really better than what's offered in Power BI and way better than what's offered in Tableau for these types of use cases. Now, I'm not going to say that dashboards are better than Tableau, right? I mean, you got to be blind to think that dashboards are a better dashboarding tool than Tableau. But, um, uh, yeah, Nick Waters' performance. So that is definitely an area where... Um, you know, I think the the performance is better in Power BI, uh, depending on what you're um, you're trying to do. But yeah, so I I obviously I'm a Cognos guy, right? Um, I also do know Power BI and I do know Tableau, um, and I know a little bit of Domo and I know a little bit of a hundred other ones, right? Um, this is definitely an area where I think I mean performance is an area where Cognos needs to improve. So so data sets I find help a lot with that. However, um, they do not, you know, there's still uh, has to be has to be fed memory to get more performance. Yeah, there's so there's still not even using data sets. I find that the, U, the user interface of Cognos is just slower, right? The web based UI, I mean, it's just slower, e even when the and we've looked under the hood to look at it. And a lot of the slowness that you feel in dashboards, for example, is really kind of UI stuff, right? Now, I, I do think it's getting a lot better. It's better than it used to be. The UI is snappier than it used to be. Another pro tip for those of you, um, I find that the UI, just the UI response time is way better if you go directly to the dispatcher rather than going through the gateway. Now, if you're using SSO, of course, you, I, I believe you still, for the longest time, you had to have a gateway. I believe that's still true. I'm not 100% certain. Um, but if you can choose not to use a gateway and go directly to a dispatcher, I have found that faster. Um, yeah, the UI is very heavy. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm I'm demoing today from a 16-core AWS instance. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it's not a lightweight thing. Um, and it definitely uh, bogs down in your... You know, I've had instances where I've got a lot of um, dashboards open in Chrome and it starts to like it starts pegging the um, the CPU on my local machine, just Chrome, because a lot of the calculations now. So for those of you who don't know, when they went to 11.1, they changed the way some things were were rendered for visualizations where it's not it's a lot more um, browser side rendering for the visualizations rather than. You know, classic Cognos was always server-side rendering and then just sending an, an, a static image, essentially, to your browser. That's not the case anymore. So, you know, that's another area where if you have users who are having a bad user experience using dashboards, take a look at it. Just pop open their task manager and see what's going on. You might find that um, Chrome uh, is, is maxing their CPU um, when they're using dashboards. And so... <laughs> 11 cores. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is definitely. Uh, um, so it's not it's not like I'm maxing that 11 cores. I mean, I, I wanted to ensure that I had great performance. So um, or, or 16 cores rather. So um, beta MS edge. Yeah, Robert, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't know. A lot of I'm, I mean, there, there's things have gotten um, not enterprise ready. Yeah. So, I mean, I. I like Power BI, actually. It's, I think it's very good at, at what it does, MIG, but it's not, you know, this type of stuff. Um, uh, it's it's not there yet. I do know Microsoft is theoretically working towards the direction where it will have more enterprise features, like comparable to data modules and comparable, you know, like SSRS is moving towards Power BI reporting. Now, you know, when are they going to get there? I don't know. Um, and what will that look like? I don't know. But... Um, I, I don't think anything offers kind of the total package that Cognos offers right now. But even, you know, when I started this live stream and we were looking and I asked people, are you using data sets or data modules rather? 
Um, most people said no, right? Uh, the answer was no, we're not, um, we're, or um, God, dashboards. Are you using dashboards? The answer was no. A lot of people said we've not ruled them out. So, I mean, if you find yourself in a defensive posture against uh, Tableau or especially Power BI in your organization, again, reach out to me. You can email me directly at the email I, I put into chat. Um, and, and I will help you figure out how you can start to roll these things out into your organization. Because I will tell you, and this is like, again, like Cognos Real Talk. If you find yourself in that situation, um, you know, you don't want to wind up where it sounds like MIG in the chat is, where, you know, they're moving away from Cognos and towards Power BI. And I guarantee you that, that the decision point, when, when it comes time, the decision makers are going to say, are going to go with the solution that their end users are clamoring for. And if you do not get your end users onto data modules and dashboards, and if you don't get them figuring out and, and seeing the value of the new Explore interface, they're going to go with Power BI. That's just the reality, right? And and I've seen it happen at a few of my clients. Um, and so if you're in that situation you you and, and you don't want to become a, a Power BI administrator, um, and a Power BI Microsoft developer, um, you know, you have to, have to, have to come up with a plan to get these solutions into your end users' hands and get them using them. You Like, you just, it's imperative. You really cannot wait any longer. Um, I, I don't want to sound too, um, I don't want to sound too crazy about it, right? But, I mean, this is happening in my customer base right now where people are, are starting to say, should we move towards Power BI? Because their end users are doing this stuff in Power BI instead of Cognos. And it's because the Cognos team has not turned these features on to let them use it. So I'll get off my high horse there. Um, so, um, I mean, we have to take a look at Explore. I know there's a lot of questions around Explore. What is it good for? Why would I want to use it? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a half hour over, um, but there's still 68 people watching. Um, so... That's a pretty good audience. Um, uh, let's take a look at, at Explore really briefly, and then um, I will, you know, um, I will, I will wrap up. We'll take any final questions and, and wrap up. So let me just take a look. And I'm going in. I mean, basically blind. Like I'm going to grab a data set I haven't looked at before, right? And let's just take a look if they're any good. So um, I don't know. Coffee sales and marketing. I really don't know what's in here. Um, so when when I open um, any support for agents outside of Legacy Studios, Nick Y asks. So um, I assume you're talking about like um, Event Studio agents. Um, yeah, cheers. Thanks, Mig. Uh, have a good day. Um, so um, kind of. I, well, I, so here's the thing. Like you can embed um, certain things. Uh, into um, an event studio agent. I, so here's 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 how this cascade works. Are you ready? Um, nothing has been removed. Now, if I make a job, and we go, um, this actually is really cool, by the way. Um, the only thing they change in Transformer is the version number. That's true, Dean. Um, uh, so do I? Let me think. Do I have a? Um, Do I have a, let's see, is there something in data? I don't know if I've built any data sets. Uh, is there an out of the box data set built? No, okay, I'm just gonna talk through it. I love Event Studio. I, and I, I tell you what, uh, Robert, I tell I, I, IBM all the time, you have to come up with something to replace this. So what I can tell you, is um, if you're going to data and AI forum, first of all, if you're going to data and AI forum, two things. For sure, track me down and say hi. Um, and second, um, uh, I think it's uh, on Tuesday night, we're having an event um, on the rooftop bar of the hotel that night um, after the first night of data and AI forum. So come to the PM Square event and, and for sure say hi and um, and have a beer or two with me there. Um, uh, I don't even remember how I got in that tangent. Um, the thing about this is, uh, if you add a, um, you can add data sets 
to a job and you can add jobs to an agent, right? So why would I want to do that? If you build a ton of, of data sets, like I really think you need to start looking at data sets in cases where your performance is terrible. Um, that uh, you can, you know, when your performance is bad in Cognos, try using data sets and see if those fix your problem. A lot of times they do, they work great. I really love them. You can embed a bunch of data sets into a job like I was going to do here, except that, you know, this is a demo, like an environment we just spun up for the purpose of this, so I don't have any data sets here. Um, and then you can add those jobs to your Event Studio agent. So ergo, you can use Event Studio to trigger data set builds. It, it works really well. Um, yeah, I love I love Event Studio, you guys. It's great. Um, ah, yes, data in AI form. If you are there, they are working on a mobile app. They're going to start beta. They're going to start beta testing towards the end of this year. The mobile app has in it, at least it did last time I saw it. So this I'm not like breaking NDA. I'm, uh, here's what I'll say. As of Think, which was in February, in the mobile app, they were talking about the ability to to be looking at something and s basically create an alert agent there, where you'd be looking at a visualization and you would click on the visualization, say you know, got a bar for sales by department and you would click on the bar for a department and you would say, and it would bring up a user interface where you could create an event that would say, alert me anytime this department sales go under X amount. And then it would actually alert you on the, in the notification tray of your phone. So it's not exactly um, event studio in the sense that it's an admin focused tool for us, but for your end users, it will give them event based uh, notifications. I think it's going to be great. This this mobile app they're working on looks incredible. I can't believe how cool it is. Um, however, um, uh, I can, you know I can't say for certain uh, when it's going to come out or how it's going to look at that point. But I do know that they've been working on it for a long time, and it and it's going to be entering beta towards the end of the year. So if you're at Data and AI Studio, check out the mobile app, specifically ask about events. When you run into one of the um, the uh, product managers, mention Event Studio, I'll mention Event Studio. Um, and uh, if they're looking for beta participants, sign up for the beta. Um, it's it's gonna be really cool. Um, so, man, we went on a huge tangent there. This is why I, I, I think this live streaming is way better than a normal um, webinar. Um, had watch, I think. Okay, watch an intersection of data and do something if something happens. Yeah, so that's basically what the mobile app will do. Watch an intersection of data and do something if something happens, except, we, okay, and, and again, when I say will do, I mean based on what I saw in February. And that was all, you know, had the, the the common disclaimer of like we can't guarantee you know we can't guarantee these features will actually come out right disclaimer it, it will watch an intersection of data and then it would alert you in your notification tray um, and they were also talking about being able to interact with um, uh, explore um, or like the AI assistant the chat bot by talking to Google or Siri that, that would be awesome too um, okay let's take a quick look at explore Explore keeps getting better, you guys. Um, I, I'm curious if you've actually, and, and I well taken the comment about using it on real world data. Please try use it. If you haven't tried using it on some real world data in your environment, try it and let me know how it works. Um, it works great on IBM's demo data. I, I would maybe not just point it to your framework manager model. I would maybe extract 15 or 20 you know, maybe four or five measures and 15 or 20 um, uh, attributes that you think are interesting into a data set and then point that and then point explore to the data set um, rather than just doing it on top of your FM model just to start. Right. Um, so if I take a look at this. Right. So how has it changed when I come in? You says it asks you, how do you want to start? And you can ask it questions. Right. Um, like coffee sales and marketing. Okay, um, that sounds cool. Um, you know, um, I think actually what that will do is actually search through, because this is the AI assistant here too. Um, that will actually probably search through our data sets. I'm, let's see what it does when I click it. 
I wonder if um, suddenly I'm getting a lot of lag to this, to my, uh, oh, I'm getting a ton of lag to my, um, that's weird. Okay, let's not try that. Um, my, my remote session is lagging like crazy. Um, let's just try clicking on sales. So now it brings us into our traditional, you know, where it shows us like the relationship, right? And here you can edit the diagram to show secondary relationships, but you'll see it's automatically building related visualizations on the side. So in 11.1.3, in order to get your auto visualizations, you had to like control click on two of these items and then it would automatically build visualizations. Whereas now it's automatically building visualizations based on what we chose here. So this is um, a big step in the right direction. You'll see I click see more, it automatically builds more visualizations. I find, and I've only played around with this a little bit, um, uh, I've only played around with this a little bit, right? Um, but I find that what it's suggesting here seems better. Like in 11.1.3, the top three things it would suggest would always be like, like, um, a table with, with the thing you clicked on and then a cross tab with the thing you clicked on. And then one of these with the thing you clicked on. And it was like, that was so useless. Um, this is much better, right? Sales and by date, colored by order number, right? So these are better. And you know, I click on it and it'll add it over to the side. Um, so I do think, like, let's be honest, The when 11.1 came out, the Explorer interface, when you jumped into it, you couldn't tell what the heck you were supposed to do. I still think it needs a lot of work in that regard, but it is headed in the right direction, right? Um, just that experience I just showed you where I come in and it, it actually kind of explains to me a little bit about what the heck you're supposed to do. And it's easy, you know, I'm in here, I can page through, um, I can scroll down here and, you know, oh, this looks cool, what is that? This looks cool, right? As an end user, I might, I might just add a few of these and then I'm gonna take a look at them later. So how to read this? I mean, sales by time and, okay, so here's the number of sales, here's the time in the day. Um, it would be great if you can export the natural language inside out to a report or dashboard. Man, wouldn't that be awesome? I, um, I told IBM that um, this needs to appear anytime you're looking at a visualization. I don't care where it is, right? It needs to be in dashboards. It needs to be in, in reports. Like when I, when I build a viz in dashboards, it needs to have this on it. It cannot, this cannot be locked away in the Explorer interface. It is too cool and too useful. And I will tell you, this is an area where I have actually seen people find cool stuff in there because it, you know, it will, it will tell you things My, like I, I've seen it do things, you know, where it starts to tell you, um, you know, like for sales, eight is the more, most important category of number of, of order number with a total value of this, which is 69% of the total, right? So um, order number eight in this data set, I think is like um, um, like a type, like a, a product, right? Um, I think. Um, and so this is basically like, what is this really doing? It's giving us a count, you know, of order number. It's, it's so cool. Um, so I have told them that this has to be moved into other areas. Uh, you please tell them to, right? Um, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I can, another thing is I've noticed like this, it's starting to do these a lot more, right? So in, in the early release of this, people didn't even know it had this functionality. They need to make this more apparent. But this is telling you, right? Like I'm looking at a visualization and it's saying, um, uh, IntelliLix. I, I mean, yeah, Jonathan, Nick, I like, absolutely. I agree 100% with you guys. Um, this need also needs to be in dashboards. When I click on this, it says what's correlated with what totals correlated with total sales and product type. I can click on that and it'll build a new visualization showing me, right? The correlation, like, you know, the, I can't remember what they're calling this chart, but I like it. Um, you know, all from that one little point on the visualization. Now I'm looking at predictive strength for sales. I'm looking at like, I'm sure if I looked at this, I could figure out how to read it. Um, exactly, Jonathan, that's exactly right. That is why it's locked away, right? So Jonathan says right now they only charge for it though, right? They charge for it. It's only available to Explorer. So 
this is a conversation we need to have with IBM, um, where we need to convince IBM that I understand, I totally understand why some of this functionality is locked away because it's it's only available at the Analytics Explorer license level. I get it, I get it, I get it, right? It, it, they want it to be something, because it is a differentiator, differentiator. So you want to be able to charge for your, your differentiators. And I understand that. Um, I would argue to them that the way the, the, BI, the BI game has changed and, you know, your differentiators, you don't charge for your differentiators anymore. Power BI does not charge for their, for their feature functionality differentiator. Well, they don't ch hardly charge for anything, right? Um, <laughs> um, uh, they, you don't charge for your feature functionality. You charge for things like, oh, well, I'll give you the, the all, most of the feature functionality for free, but oh, hey, you want to like distribute this to anybody? Well, that's a charge. You want to, you need more horsepower than just what's on your desktop? That's a huge charge, right? That's how Microsoft is, um, um, is making their money, right? So, um, but this stuff is incredible. And, and they've really, I mean, this is getting really great. And, and another great thing that's in here is like, I can be looking at any visualization. So the comparison, right? Like they locked that away. It was hard to even figure out how to do it. Well, now I can be like compare. And now it will, like, it'll talk me through various comparisons. Do you want to compare to a blank chart? Do you want to compare it to itself? Do you want to compare it with total order sales? Do you want to compare it with the bottom 10 on sales, right? So I'll say, yeah, show me this and uh, show me this. I want to do both of those. And let me explore. Well, what does that mean, right? So now I'm, I got chart A, I got chart B. It automatically built um, chart B, right? And I can do things like, like if you messed around with this in the past, you knew like you would move around. It had that comparison line. And, um, you know, the comparison line wouldn't stay on the visualizations. Check this out. And you'll notice as I move this up and down, the comparison line is scaling on the left-hand visualization. And it stays there when I'm done, <laughs> you know? Um, this is just so much better uh, than the previous uh, release, right? Um, I can tell it whether or not I want it to sync. What do I want it to sync? Like, oh, sync axis scale. Syncing axis scale is, of course, going to make these visualizations look kind of wonky, I would assume. Yeah, right? Now I've got a synced axis scale. I can unsync the axis scale. Um, so this is really powerful. Um, this is, And they're really, I think it's moving in the right direction with this. Now, where would I like to see them go, right? Um, I would really like to see them go in a direction of because one of the number one ways that I get stuff out of here is I pin it, right? So um, the way they need to take these pins is like this pinning idea is really cool. Um, and they need to take it in the direction of not just something that you share with yourself, but something that other people can access. So someone asked earlier about pins. We, we haven't gone... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, too bad this wasn't co closer to the original. Oh man, I, people really. Um, I think I think Cognos. How, people do not understand how good Cognos has gotten over the course of the last year and a half. They really do not, um, and it's a shame uh, because it has moved in such a great direction. The feature functionality has improved so much, um, and people just do not have a, a real appreciation for. Um, uh, for, for for like people don't know. If you like, I'll, I'll give you an example. I participate, so I don't know how many people watching um, participate in Reddit, right? But I'm um first of all, I'm I'm the I'm the um uh, uh moderator of the Cognos subreddit, so I'm sure you all use Cognos. Cognos is great. Um, uh, I would encourage you to um, check out the Cognos subreddit as well. Help me. It's it's decently active, but help me get it more at, uh, active. But um, the uh, you know if you go to the business intelligence subreddit, people there their impression of Cognos is stuck in Cognos 10. They really have no idea the strides it's made. Um, and and um, in your organization. If you have not given people access to data modules and data sets and explore and stories, you may be a Cognos customer, but no one in your organization understands the strides it's made either. 
So, um, so you really need to consider how, how to, um, should be able to put pins into a cloud space. That would be awesome. Um, uh, yeah, that would be awesome, Robert. Um, wish it was more active, Michael. I agree. Um, so, um, let me just, so if you go there, um, reddit.com slash r slash Cognos, you'll see, um, the Cognos subreddit. We have decent conversations there. Um, and, and there's a nice little community of people who participate in Cogn in the Cognos subreddit, but I would encourage you to check it out uh, and, um, and, and, you know, join the, uh, join the, the crowd there. So um, I've gone 48 minutes over, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I'm amazed. So that we still have 56 people watching, which is, um, I'm floored that 56 people would sit here and, and watch me putz around with this version of Cognos for, for 40, uh, an hour and 48 minutes. So, um, we will, uh, things to, to consider. Um, if you like this, let us know, reach out to us. Um, you know, you can, uh, tweet at us. Um, we're at PM square, right. Um, to let us know that you like this, um, you know, check out our website, of course, PM square.com. Um, if you're going to data an AI forum next week, get reach out to us. Come see our booth. Come to our event Tuesday night. Track me down and, and say hello. I'm happy to. Um, uh, I'm always happy to meet people. Um, and then the number one takeaway uh, is download this release, get it into um, production. And figure out a way to get your end users using this stuff. It's critical. It's critical, critical, critical. Um, this stuff is uh, it, this stuff is good enough now. Um, Cognos has made huge strides. It can meet most of the needs uh, of your user community. There may still be things like you know people love Tableau. Okay, let them use Tableau, right? People like Power BI. Let them use Power BI. Um, but Cognos can meet a lot of those needs. You've uh, you really need to put together a plan to get your user community on board with these things. It's crucial at this point that you do that um, for the health and longevity of your Cognos environment. Um, I don't, you know, I won't beat around the bush. That's just the reality. So um, with that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to wrap it up. We had a great conversation, uh, a great, um, I was really happy with, with how interactive everything was. I, I hope you're happy uh, with it too. Um, and um, I'm going to wrap things up there. Um, and thank you for showing up. Thank you so much. I think our, our first live stream uh, was a huge success. Um, and uh, and yeah, we'll, um, I'm sure we'll do more of these in the future. So um, we'll, we'll let you guys know uh, when to tune back in. Uh, thanks again. And um, uh, thank you to IBM uh, for putting so much cool stuff in the last few releases as well. I think that's in order. It's really heading um, in, in the right direction. Uh, and I'm very happy with it. So, um, thanks everybody. Have a good day and, uh, tune in in the future. We will do more uh, of these. I am certain. Take care.